Bugcatcher Nancy does not want to fight you. Bugcatcher Nancy wants to share with you the beautiful world of bug Pokemon that exist in real life. Number one on this list is Caterpie. And of course you're like, well, duh, like caterpillars exist. Nuh-uh, friend, nuh-uh, it's a real caterpillar. The inspiration for Caterpie is based on the Asian swallowtail caterpillar. In fact, don't worry if you don't live in Asia because there is a very similar caterpie looking as caterpillar. It is the spice bush caterpillar, and it not only has a green form, but its final larval instar, right before it's about to pupate, is orange, so it's a shiny caterpie. <laughs> That Y-shaped organ on Caterpie's head is actually a real structure and a real feature on real swallowtail caterpillars. All swallowtail caterpillars have them regardless if they look exactly like Caterpie or they don't. And this magical little thing that pops out of their head is called an osmeterium. It is invertible, so normally you can't see it. When the insect is upset, scared, whatever, it will bloop that osmeterium out and produces a very stinky, stinky smell. It is releasing volatile organic acids that smell really bad. Of course, it's impossible to generalize exactly what organic acids all of them have, because you know, there's a bunch of different species of swallowtails. And sometimes even the younger caterpillars have a different chemical makeup than the older caterpillars. So even in the same species, you can have different chemical compounds and different chemical mixtures based on how old they are. So just pretty generally, remember that they are volatile organic acids. Number two on this list is Beedrill. I'm going to be going through the first and second generation because I am old. But if you like this series, be sure to give it a like, leave me a comment, and let me know if you want me to talk about any other of your favorite Pokemon in the later generations. And of course you're like, duh, it like is a bee. But what I wanted to talk about with Beedrill is not the fact that it's like a Beedrill. I actually wanted to talk about its whole life cycle. Everything from Weedle to Kakuna to Beedrill. Many people don't know that wasps, bees, and ants have what is called complete metamorphosis. Just like a butterfly, they will start with a little larval stage, like a little caterpillar, and then they will have a pupil stage or a cocoon stage before emerging as the adult. So I think that's really interesting in Pokemon that they got all three of those life stages talking about the Beedrill. When I was in grad school and learned for the first time that honeybees and bees and wasps and all them have complete metamorphosis, I was like shocked. Although in hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have been because I did play Pokemon. By the way, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nancy. I am an entomologist, which means that I study bugs and I live in Quito, Ecuador, where normally I'm toting you around the jungles of Ecuador to look at all the beautiful, amazing insects that exist in real life. But obviously that isn't happening right now. So welcome to my YouTube channel and thank you so much for the support by liking, like smash that button and by subscribing and of course sharing this with your friends. Please don't forget to tell me which is your favorite Pokemon Pokemon down below it can be your favorite bug Pokemon can be your favorite whatever Pokemon but please let me know down below and I will let you know what my favorite one is at the end of this video before we get too far along here let's start off with some history of Pokemon both the history history of it and also my relationship with Pokemon growing up first of all the creator of Pokemon said that he loved catching bugs as a young child and was saddened that kids in the city didn't have the same experience and with the Game Boy coming out you know <laughs> a long time ago, I'm so old, <laughs> before touch screens existed. The Game Boy was one of the first systems to actually be able to link up and he thought this is a great way for me to create a game that kids can have this experience of catching animals, going out in nature, kind of adventuring and exploring and then trade these animals or these characters across this Game Boy platform. So basically a big bug nerd was like, I want to share bug collecting with friends. The premise of Pokemon, at least in the games of you are like an adventurer and you go out and you fill the Pokedex and you like, you know, 
get all these species in there is not unlike what I feel like a lot of entomologists do, especially taxonomists. And many entomologists, including myself, have stated that Pokemon is one of the big reasons that they got into biology or even entomology to begin with. So I played the original Pokemon, Pokemon Red was the one that I had first. And in Pokemon Red, Professor Oak talks to you and introduces the world of Pokemon to you. He like looks you in the eye as much as any 2D sprite can look you in the eye and basically says, this is the world of Pokemon. Some people have Pokemon as pets, some people use Pokemon for fights, but I, I study Pokemon. And little 10 year old me was like, oh my God, I wish the world of Pokemon existed so that way I could study them too. And then I grew up, <clears throat> got older. <laughs> and realized that you can, it's called ecology, and you can do exactly that, which is how I think I got started on my journey of not only bugs and entomology, but specifically the ecology version. For those of you who don't exactly know what ecology is, because that word is tossed around a lot and we assume you know what it means, but it's basically how organisms are interacting with the environment and interacting with each other, like how are they dealing when there's drought, what are they doing to try and find mates? What are they doing to try and compete with other things? What are they doing to try and eat? What are they doing to try and not be eaten? Pretty generally. How does the thing function, work in the ecosystem? All right, number three on this list is kind of like a hybrid because I'm gonna be talking about Heracross, but it also has a mega form. So we're gonna be talking about both of them right now. Regular old Heracross is based off of the Japanese rhinoceros beetle, and the mega form of Heracross is based off of the Hercules beetle. Both of these are in the subfamily Dynastinae, which are like the big beetles with the horns and the chubby bits. Regardless if you are looking at the Japanese rhinoceros beetle or you are looking at the ones in South America, the Hercules beetles, the males have those big horns, either like this or just kind of like a thing off the front of their face. Beetles with those big horns are using them to compete with other males. Males tend to have big horns, females tend to have really tiny horns or no horns at all. And sometimes you get a male that just didn't eat enough of the larva and his life kind of kind of sucks a little bit. He has a little horn and he cannot compete with the other males particularly well and gets shoved around. It's interesting because the Heracross is a bug fighting Pokemon, which totally makes sense because the males of both rhinoceros beetles and Hercules beetles fight other males with those big horns. They pick them up, they shove them off of logs if they are the rhinoceros beetles with those big horns, they just kind of go like bloop. And if you are a Hercules beetle with the big ones, you like literally just walk over and you grab the male and your big honking horns and you throw them overboard. That is how the beetles do. This is really important for females because females only want to mate with the biggest and strongest males, obviously, like get your small horned crap out of here. You did not eat enough as a larva. You are not strong enough to father my children. So this fighting aspect, which we see in the Pokemon, right, which we see in Heracross of being both bug and fighting, is really important to their real life biology. This big horn is also considered to be an honest signal. Not only can small males not compete with big males, but if there happens to be no big males around and a small male like walks over to a female, she's gonna take one look at him and be like, Number four on this list is my personal favorite bug Pokemon, not because it's strong, but just because it's interesting. And this is Shedinja. And this is because this is the cast off exoskeleton of a cicada. What a cool thing that they actually included that into the game. It's like, makes me so happy on so many different levels. Those of you in the States are going to be experiencing brood X or brood 10 to 17 year periodical cicadas where the trees are just going to scream for a couple weeks. No big deal. So you're gonna see these a lot. <laughs> Cicadas have a really interesting life cycle. They live underground for a set period of time, one, three, five, seven, 13, and 17 years are common. 
So they live underground for a set period of time and then they crawl out. They have a nymphal form. They crawl out of the ground, they grip the tree and the adult cicada bursts out of that exoskeleton, flies away, and that exoskeleton is always left behind. If you're living in the States and you're in the area of the periodical cicadas, you will find them on trees, maybe on your house, like here, there, and the other places. They're all gonna emerge at once. Shodinja is the cast off old exoskeleton called the Exuvia that is left behind. And I love this Pokemon because it is a ghost type, which makes perfect sense because it's not actually a living insect anymore. It's just the cast off husk. It's also interesting because it only has one HP. It's like resistant to basically everything, but has one HP, which also makes sense because it's literally just the delicate cast off exoskeleton. So if you are in the States or you're anywhere where there's going to be cicadas in Ecuador, there's cicadas every April. They're very beautiful. Like picture around here somewhere. So if you're in an area where you're going to be getting cicadas or you're in an area and you know when cicadas tend to show up, be sure to look for the cast off exoskeleton of the cicadas emerging. And finally, number five on this list is actually two for one. So maybe it's like actually like six Pokemon, but I put them together because it is Paris and Parasect. They are probably also cicada Pokemon. However, there's a twist because Paris has the two mushrooms growing out of its back and then Parasect is completely covered by that fungus. And this is parasitic fungus that has attacked the insect. It is both bug and fungus together as one. This is an example where real life is actually just stranger than fiction. Cordyceps fungus and others like it. Cordyceps is a, is a genus that's kind of messy and now we know that there's other taxon of fungus that do the same thing, but most people just know it by cordyceps. We're gonna leave it at that. Cordyceps like fungus <laughs> infects the insect, eventually taking over the insect's nervous system and bends it to its will. There's tons of different types of cordyceps like fungus. Some of them attack ants, some of them attack moths, some of them attack cicadas. Basically for every species of insect, we believe that there is a parasitic fungus. The parasitic fungus will enter through the breathing holes of the insect on the side of the abdomen or in the thorax and enter the body cavity where it will eventually start to proliferate and take control of the insect. Eventually it takes over the insect's nervous system. We used to think that it took over just the brain, but now it seems to be that these parasitic fungus bypass the brain completely and just attack the motor neurons and make the insect walk, usually away from the colony, up some type of tree and makes the insect clamp down really high up there somewhere where it normally wouldn't be. After it has been controlling this insect, it is now time for the fungus to reproduce. This is where it will eventually kill the insect. It usually makes the insect clamp down on something and, and sometimes just burst out all over the body. Sometimes it bursts out from the back of the head in two little stalks. And this is how the fungus reproduces those stalks that are shooting out are the fruiting bodies, which will then produce the spores, which will then float through the air, which will then infect other insects, and the cycle repeats. And so when you're looking at Paris and Parasect, be sure to remember that while they do look very cute with their little mushrooms, they are nothing more than a vehicle that is being bent to the will of a parasitic fungus. Well, love bugs, that is all I have for you this week. If you liked this video, give, make sure you give it an actual like. It helped me, it helped the algorithms, you know, help me. Let me know your favorite Pokemon down below. Let me know if there's other bug Pokemon that you want me to cover, because we totally can do a part two. There are plenty of bug Pokemon now with like the, the 800 and some odd that exist. Be sure to check up here for some Entomologist Reacts video, because we all know that insect stuff on the internet is usually not excellent and very fear mongering. And check down here for some Entomologist Explains. And my all time favorite Pokemon is Squirtle. How can you deny the Squirtle Squad also was my very first starter ever and I am forever faithful to Squirtle. All right, I will see you all next week. Bye.